really demonstrates the biggest problem these movies has always been Michael Bay. Alright, hi everybody, I'm here with another batch of movie reviews of things I've watched over the last few weeks that I have not had time to record because... Everything, because everything is continuously happening. I'm doing my best to keep my head above water, and that's not saying things are bad. They're just really busy, and I'm just trying to keep up as best I can. So that being said, the first one I'm going to talk about is one I actually saw when it first came out. But I guess it's already on streaming, so uh, this is me definitely doing a lot of catch up. Uh, this is Transformers: Rise of the Beast, which is the new Transformers movie that, that sports the Beast Wars characters. Uh, now, a big reason why I still want to talk about this, despite the fact that it's been like a month since it came out, um, is because uh, I do want to like. The Beast Wars of the Transformers franchise was mine. Like, that was my favorite one of the bunch. I never really watched the original Transformers. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, we can cut that, right? We probably won't because we're lazy. But, anyway. Um, yeah, Beast Wars is very much like my Transformers show. I never really watched the original 80s. I didn't watch any. If it involved the vehicles, I just had no interest. I don't know why. But it involved, it involved cool stuff like gorillas and dragons and. Velociraptors and T-Rex, all that stuff is like, fuck yes, I love this. This is my shit. Um, so all the Transformers I had when I was a kid was in the Beast Wars line. I had like, a whole bunch of them. Um, the thing about that, though, is uh, one, the show has not aged particularly well, not even because of the writing or the voice acting, it's just because it was like, they were, they were capitalizing on the uh, 3D animation that was just like developing around that time. So the animation just looks like really, really, really bad and dated by today's standards. Um, and the other thing is, is I, to this day, don't know what the full sequential story is, because when I was a kid, they played the episodes out of order. Um, and I don't think that, I didn't watch them when they originally aired, I watched reruns, but they didn't play the reruns in order, so we just kind of jumped around a bit, so I just kind of had to piece together what happened, um, and then Beast Machines came out there after, and I remember watching some of it, I didn't watch a whole lot of it. Uh, my parents were very Christian conservative, so I think at some point they st stopped allowing me to watch it. I don't really know why. Um, that All that's to say is I had a bunch of Beast Wars Transformers toys. I think I still have them at home somewhere. Um, and Beast Wars is like my favorite part of the, the Transformers franchise. So um, right off the bat, we already get some credit just for having Optimus Primal and Cheetor and Rhinox. Um, no Mousetrap. That's actually a good thing. Uh, Rat Trap, not Mousetrap. Um... And the other character, whose name I forget, even though she plays, a pro like, it's played by Michelle Yeoh, who, of course, is fantastic. Um, and it's going to bug me now, so I'm going to try to quickly and discreetly vamp while I try to find it. Um, and it's it's going to order appearance, and it's very annoying. Air Razor. That's what it was. Air Razor. Who, uh, I don't remember too much from the show. I think that character died fairly early on, if I'm not mistaken, but say, that's not important. Um, here's what is important, is the fact that I honestly don't think, uh, this movie got a fair amount of negative reviews when it came out, and I honestly don't think it's that bad. I actually think it's, I actually think it's pretty entertaining for what it is. Um, I think this is, again... Sorry, I got distracted by voices outside. But, like, the Transformers franchise is always one of the interesting one where I remember when I first watched it, when I, I liked it when I better when I was younger, when they first came out, and I was very swept away by the all explosions and shit, because I was a teenager, or, like, in my early 20s. Um, but they have, they just do not, they age like milk. They just did not age particularly well, any of them. Um, and all the cracks begin to show, and very much how Michael Bay was the problem of these movies. And I think Bumblebee in this movie kind of confirmed that, because... Both movies did not have Michael Bay direct uh, touch in any way, shape, or form outside of maybe just, like, him having his f fingerprints on the franchise overall. Um, and they're already way better than most of the other Transformers movies, except maybe the first one. Um, Bumblebee's still the best one. This one's still, like, it's good, it's not great, but I was entertained by it. Um, it's not Transformers 2, 3, 4, and 5, which on rewatch are insufferable. Um... But anyway, uh, right off the bat, this one has a more uh, likable protagonist in the form of... I, I pulled up IMDb ahead of time for the sake of looking at this list. But by Anthony Ramos, who plays a character called Noah, um, who is a, strug a struggling kid uh, who has a younger brother who has like some kind of uh, chronic condition he's trying to get help for. Um, right up, like right off the bat, I appreciate uh, the attempt to diversify the cast a bit more, as opposed to like Shia LaBeouf and Mark Wahlberg, who have played to the whitey category. Um, this one brings it more relatable and meaningful uh, connection to the plot and with a good main character. I like that connection. I like the connection the brothers have. I thought that was good. I liked. Uh, 
I think this was her. Like the, the other main character is like played by Luna Loren Velez. Uh, Velez, Velez. I'm butchering that name. Um, or is it? The other main character, I prob I don't remember who is who. Okay, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm mixing up with the, Dominique Fishback, uh, who plays the other main character in this movie. Uh, she's really good in it as well. Uh, they, they both work well off each other. Um, of course, you have the other Transformers movie, which uh, other Transformers in this movie, uh, with the biggest one we see the most of is Mirage, played by Pete Davidson. And I, uh, Pete Davidson's one of those actors I've just never understood the appeal of. I still don't really get it. I don't think he's that particularly funny. I don't even think he's that good of an actor. Um, but for some reason, but people really like him and I don't get why. I really don't. Um, that being said, I do kind of, I do seem to notice with actors I tend not to like in live action products. I like their voice acting better because it feels like they have to try harder to make it work. Um, and I feel like it's more the case here because even though there is still too many Pete Davidson isms towards the like the, it, it does grain after a while um it's still like I, I liked it better overall and I like what they eventually where they eventually took the character towards the end with his relationship with Noah I thought that was well handled whereas Ron Perlman plays Optimus Primal and of course like that's my boy so I was very much like yeah anytime when Ron Perlman's in there I'm like fuck yes Optimus Primal um and I actually really got I like, of all the plot lines in this movie like and uh it was the connection between Optimus Primal and Air Razor I got surprisingly invested in. I think the, the scenes they had together when ultimately happens to those characters I actually thought were one of the more well-written, more well-acted sequences of the film um, and tied well into the arcs of the story. Uh, this one, uh, Peter C Cullen is back at Optimus Prime. Uh, he has more of an arc in this film compared to the other films where he just kind of played the leader. This one, he's still very kind of like ambivalent and cynical and jaded towards the human race. Um, and he's just trying to get his people back home, but they're stuck there. Um, and, but Noah, of course, he works with Noah, who kind of has a similar idea, which is uh, the whole plot of this movie revolves around um, Scourge, who's playing Peter Dinklage, I'll talk about him in a moment, um, is a servant of uh, Unicron, which is the big planet Galactus-type robot that goes around planet to planet eating robots. Uh, eating planets. Ugh. You know what I'm trying to say, goddammit. I'm trying, it's been a while since I've done this, I'm a little loopy, I apologize, I'll get better as I keep going. Um, so, while, so... While this is happening, there's apparently this kind of world key that I got split in half and taken to Earth by Optimus Primal um, to prevent Unicron from being able to travel from planet to planet as quickly as he could. Uh, but now that the Noah like accidentally stumbles onto one of the pieces, uh, sorry, Noah and uh, Dominique's character, who is Elena. Mm. Or uh, Elena? Yeah. Um... And they kind of, and but at the same time, um, Noah's characters kind of have a conflict of whether or not he should even help them because if he, if they get the keys get in the wrong hands before the Transformers go back to their planet, then they could inadvertently destroy his own planet. Um, in the same way that uh, Optimus Prime actually like, can inadvertently screw things up on his planet as well. Um, those kind of interplays and those relationships together work pretty well to get the point across, and I think it's a good arc for both of them overall. It works. I think it works on the whole. Is it perfect? God, no. Um, but is, is it fun? Yes. Um, and I think a lot of it boils down to, it's just, I feel like this movie has more self-awareness of what it is than other transfer the other Transformers movies similar to it. Um, because I think one issue the Michael Bay movies always had is it always felt like it was taking themselves too seriously or not seriously enough. He never really knew how to walk the good, the fine line between fun but not obnoxious. Um, the Michael Bay films, when they tried to be too fun, were super annoying to watch, super obnoxious, they were insufferable, and it, it, they dragged on for way too long, and the serious ones had the inverse effect of trying to take itself too seriously about a movie about giant robots that punch each other. Um, it never knew how to walk a line of fun while still being mature enough that it doesn't feel like it just becomes just for 12-year-olds. And I know it's weird to say about Transformers movies because they're all meant for children, basically, but you know what I'm trying to say. There's like This one does feel like it has a good identity that it is a Transformers movie, it is about giant robots that explicitly turn into gorillas and cheetahs and shit, um, but it's still, fu it's still fun. It's well shot. I can see what's happening. The stakes are set high enough. There's a lot of plot contrivances and conveniences. Sure, whatever. They don't ultimately matter. Um... 
There's some cool stuff that happens, like happens with the robots. Uh, the villain does his job well enough. Uh, Peter Dinklage, oddly enough, has the inverse problem. I was talking about Pete Davidson, where um, on-screen actors I don't like tend to do better in voice actors have a try harder. Peter Dinklage is the opposite of that, where he's really good when he's a physical presence on screen, but he's just not a very good voice actor. Um, and for some reason, because of his name status, he keeps getting voice acting roles, even though he always kind of sounds more than a little bored in the in the. Um, the voice booth and like no more infamous example of that than the death his original run on destiny which was lampooned for fairly obvious reasons um and this one isn't terrible by comparison but it's not great either it's pretty forgettable um and i like seeing unicron on screen and the capacity um and it was again just kind of cool to see that piece of it in there because they kind of tease it towards the end of the michael bay era but they're the way they set up made it's so impractical to have him appear in any meaningful way um, and not just destroy the world. They kind of wrote themselves into a corner with that. This one doesn't do that. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's, like I said, I think the I was I wish there was more of the animals in the Beast War characters in there, obviously. I would love it if they got their own spinoff movie. I thought that'd be cool. Uh, like, Cheetor has, like, three lines in the entire film. Rhinox kind of gets screwed over a little bit, too. Um, most of the lines go to Ron Perlman and Michelle Yeoh, uh, but thankfully those scenes are actually really good, so I'm okay with that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much more to say other than I think this one has a clear self-identity. I think it's fun. Um, I think it is what it wants to be. Um, and if they, and it does have a bonkers twist ending, uh, and I don't know how, if they're going to pay that off or not. Who knows, but it is definitely ballsy. Um, and I'm very curious to what they do with the next. Um, so I got a lot of movies across today, and I apologize this wasn't the most coherent review out there, but overall, I, if I had to give it a score, I'd give it like a 6 or 7 out of 10. Uh, not great, but I enjoyed it. So uh, that's all I have for Transformers Rise of the Beast. Uh, next up, we are going to talk about um, Insidious, because I did see that one too, and I have to keep reminding myself that I saw it, so stay tuned for that.